Hey guys, so in today's video we're going to be working with the Ender 3 V2 and recently I had to design a part that took up most of the print bed and I had a heck of a time printing it. And I just wanted to share with you guys the trouble I was having along with the solution to using the entire print bed to print large objects. So guys, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing, turn on your notification bell and leave some comments. I love the comments and do my best to get back to you guys as soon as possible. All right, so let's uh, first explain the the part that I needed to print. It's a center uh, finder for a circle. So here's here's the part right here. It is it is a big part, and this takes up it's about 210 millimeters by 210 millimeters. And the bed, as you know, on the Ender 3 V2 is 230 by 230, and that's the full size of it. I'm going to start the print with the settings the way they were when I was having uh, lots of failures so you guys can see what was going on. And if you're having problems like this, uh, maybe this is the solution for you. All right, guys, so let's take a look and see what, what's going on here. All right, so what we can see here is that um, certain spots of the bed, it looks like adhesion was okay, like in this section here. Um, going across the middle here seemed okay. But when you start to get off into the edges, you start to have problems. Towards the back here, there's issues. I'm going to show you how bad the problems were here. So you can see that this part of the this part of the print is uh, looks good, but over here, when you start getting to these to the to the extremes, the edges, uh, you can see here that the print didn't go so well. Uh, now it took me some time to figure out why why this was going on. But let me show you what I found. All right, so first I need to determine what the problem what the problem is. So when I put when I put this uh, this ruler here, I try to 
wiggle this side to side and it doesn't it doesn't rock when I put it across this way I get some movement so my particular build plate has a high spot in the middle and uh, at first I thought it was I thought it was the Garolite so I took the Garolite off and I wanted to confirm that it was that it was the Garolite and not the build plate itself. When I take the Garolite off and check the build plate to across the middle, same way. It's when I go this way that you got that rocking. So my, my aluminum build plate has a high spot in the middle. And it's not too bad going this way. And let me move the printhead out of the way. All right, so across the front, looks like it's okay. Across the middle, it looks okay. Across the back, it looks okay. But when I start to go diagonal, that's when the problem manifests. And it's hard to catch it on camera, but the middle of the ruler is touching the build plate. But over here on the two ends, there's, uh, there's a gap. So on this side, there's a significant gap. And on this side as well. So yeah, if, uh, if if you have a straight ruler and you put it on your build plate, you can test this yourself. And uh, there's a couple of ways that you can address this. You can take the build plate off and uh, put some sandpaper on a on a either a piece of glass or a marble tile, uh, and you're gonna stick the the non-abrasive side of the sandpaper to to the to the tile or the piece of glass so that'll give you a flat surface and then you can sand the build plate face that you're trying to even out on that sandpaper and it should take off the high spot but there's another way that you can do it without having to go through all this trouble and um, I came across uh, after doing some research online on uh, dealing with an uneven um, print surface, I came across uh, UBL, and I had seen this on some of the firmwares, but I didn't understand it. I had been downloading the Gyres standard BL Touch three by three firmware, and that's what I've been using up until this point. So every time prior to a print, it would probe these nine points, and then it would uh, adjust based on the value that it received from the bed pro but there's a better way so now all these other points in between you can also determine what they are but you need to download the gyre firmware and i'll go ahead and link this firmware in the video description that way if you guys want it uh, you can get it now this one isn't a high temperature firmware uh, max temperature is 260 but this one will give you a good start if you're not planning to print above 260. let's go ahead and set up the printer for the Gyres UBL 10 by 10 firmware using a BL Touch. Just go through this real quick. Now I'm not gonna get real detailed in the flash in the firmware and flash in the screen because I have another video on that. I'll link it in the description. But if you already have the Gyres firmware installed on your computer, but you just want to upgrade to the UBL 10 by 10 BL Touch version, which I currently have loaded on the machine, all you need to do is Format a uh, format the SD card that came with the printer. Make sure to get your files off it first. You're going to set your unit allocation size to 4096 and just standard FAT32 format. Put the bin file that I'm going to link in the description on the SD card. Turn your printer on 
and uh, wait for the main menu to appear. You'll, you'll get this menu right here on the, on the right hand side. Once that appears, then you know you're good to go. Well, the next thing that we're going to do to initiate the, uh, the UBL bed mesh is from the main menu, you're going to select, you're going to navigate over to level, select level, and then you're going to come over here to where it says create a new mesh. Uh, now, but before we do that, we've got to make sure that we preheat the bed. So let's come over to control, temperature, and bed. We're, we're not concerned about the hot end. We just want to preheat the bed. And you want to preheat the bed to the temperature that you're normally going to be printing with. I print with a lot of PETG. So for me, I found that 80 degrees is perfect for that. So I'm going to preheat my bed to 80. And then once it's preheated, then we're going to go back to uh, the level. Select level. And we're going to create a new mesh. So I'm going to wait for this thing to warm up, and then I'll restart the video. All right, so we're up to temp, 80 degrees. And now we're just going to select create a new mesh. The printer is going to home, and then it's going to start probing. I'm going to set it over here so you guys can see what it's doing. All right, guys, so it takes about 10 minutes to complete. And once the probing is finished, what you need to do is you need to confirm. And this will save the current mesh to the EEPROM. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And it takes a second or two for it to save because it's a big mesh. And then I'm going to show you guys how you can view the mesh. So from the same menu, you're just going to scroll down to where it says View Mesh. Click on that. And now I want to select viewer because I want to see the value and I also want to see the uh, the asymmetric uh, shape but once you have those two selected just click view mesh and then this shows you uh, what the shape of your build plate looks like so the goal is to have everything at zero but we know that the build plate has a hump in it uh, so it shows that right across the middle is is where it's either zero or slightly higher than zero and then when you start to get to the edges the edges curve down uh, so here I'm 0.23 along the edges 0.22 along the back edge and then the left front uh, minus uh, 0.11 and minus 10 on the right front now the beauty of this is that you don't have to correct this problem with the build plate you don't need to sand it you don't have to do anything once it creates the mesh, it will compensate for these deviations during the print. And I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and uh, go back, go back again, and then we're going we're gonna to restart that same print. But now there are a couple of things that you do need to uh, activate uh, via the start G-code. I'll go ahead and include my start G-code for an Ender 3 V2 in the video description. If you guys have a larger print surface, you can modify that G-code to suit your bed size. But all you guys out there running an Ender 3 or Ender 3 V2 using a, uh, a BL Touch or CR Touch or 3D Touch, this start G-code will work for you. So I'm just going to go ahead and start a print. That way you guys can check it out. So now I created one uh, UBL version. This has the start G-code already set up in it. 
Guys, if you've never printed on Garolite, I highly recommend it. It's a very sticky surface once it heats up. And once it cools down, it releases the parts. Uh, I was out of stock for a while on Amazon. It looks like they lost one of the shipments that I sent. Uh, but I have replaced that lost shipment with another one. Uh, currently, they're in stock. If you guys are interested in them, you can pick them up there. I'll leave the link in the video description. For those of you that already purchased it, uh, leave some comments and let me know how you like it. And thanks for supporting my work. One of the cool things about this uh, Start G code. Get your shot of the nozzle. You can see the nozzle preheats over on the side. That way, any oozing will stay on that side and won't stick to the build plate. And then once it does its purge, that little uh, piece of filament that's stuck there will get wiped away. Oh yeah, so this is uh, Start G Code works awesome. All right, so this is the same print as before. We haven't made any changes to the uh, bed at all. All we did is initiate the UBL, create a mesh, and now the main board is compensating for those deviations in the bed. All right, guys, so we're closer, but it looks like we still need some work. I'm going to stop the print here, and we'll take a look at it. And see what we can do to uh, completely fix it. So it looks like there's a big improvement over the last attempt, but it still has some problems. So what I think I'm going to do now is jump on the on shape and create some uh, like some test squares that would hit all of the probe points that we have in the mesh and take a look at the result of trying to print a couple of layers of those squares and then tweak the mesh from there. The cool thing about the gyres UBL is that there is a manual mesh edit so we can go in and manually adjust the parts of the mesh that uh, need adjusting so we're going to try to do that now this is the first time i do this so uh, so we're going to be learning together but let's see if we can improve this uh, mesh on this particular uh, ender 3 v2 heated bed all right so let's take a look at this let's take a look at this print so it looks like it still clearly has some issues. Uh, it's, it's a lot better than the first one, but it still has some problems. So I'm going to jump on the on shape real quick, and then we're going to create a, a calibration tool that we're going to use to fine tune this UBL bed mesh. All right, so here's where we are after the test squares. Looks like uh, most of the problems are along the bottom and a few here up at the very top. Especially here, the last two rows in the center. You can see that uh, some of those prints didn't even complete. A lot of that stuff got hung up on the nozzle and it was dragging around all over the place and made a mess. Anyhow, so let's uh, go into the mesh and see if we can manually adjust. After you create your unified bed level mesh, and print off your first uh, set of test squares. If you get a result that looks like this, where some of the squares look good, but then some of the squares either didn't print, or uh, it looks like the Z offset might not be right, uh, then what you're gonna need to do at this point is manually tune these areas that have trouble. And I'm gonna show you how I did that.
before we actually start uh, making any changes here, we need to make sure we warm up the bed. So once this homing is done, we're going to warm up the bed. All right, so I'm going to go back. Control, temperature, bed. And I print with PETG, so my bed temperature is, uh, I use 85 for the first layer. And then uh, it settles to 80 after the first layer. And I'll include my profile in the video description. That way, if you guys want to use this, you can, along with the, uh, the test files that I made and the flash file for the gyres UBL 10 by 10. Now that the printer is warmed up, this is what we're going to do next. So from the main menu, you're going to go to level. And then uh, I'm going to show you guys the, the current mesh, the way it is. And this is after I've already adjusted it. So this is this is the mesh, and it's it's a hundred different uh, points. Now I can't probe all one hundred points, so what it does do is it it probes everything here in the in the middle. So it probes about sixty four points, and then it uh, it guesses along the outsides. Uh, so if you can see, looks like what it's done here for for the most part is if it has a value of uh, let's say negative 0.29 it applies that value to the outside square uh, so if when you're doing the manual tuning you wind up with certain measurements you can go ahead and adjust the, the outside ones to to be the same um, and and I found that, that that works pretty well all right so let's let's assume that this is this is your this is the mesh here that we're working with and now this is reverse because I'm looking at the uh, the underside of it, so you would have to reverse this. But on the test file that I'm going to include in the uh, download link uh, in the video description, I'll make sure that that it'll have a way that you can uh, view these squares from the top, and uh, that way you can compare that to the mesh without having to flip it around and do all that. But anyway, you want to adjust the areas that had trouble. So for example. On this print here, so this was the first print after creating the uh, unified bed leveling mesh. There was a lot of problems in this area here. So if this is reversed, this is this way, then this side would correspond to this side of the grid. Uh, so these these end squares here would be the uh, would be the point oh four. And would be the 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 negative 0.16, and you can tell if it's negative or positive based on the color. So, for example, if it's if it's zero, it has no color. If it's a, a positive number, like uh like a positive z offset of 0.01, then it'll slightly be green, like this one. And then if it's a negative z offset, they'll be in red. The more negative the Z offset, the brighter the red. The more positive the Z offset, the brighter the green. And that's how this mesh thing works out. Let me show you how you can manually adjust it. So from here, you're going to go back. You're going to go back again. You're going to go to manual tuning. Printer's going to home again. It's currently uh, warmed up to 85, so we're good to go on the temperature. Bring the printer in close so you guys can see. All right, so from the menu, you have your, your mesh points. So you got mesh point X and mesh point Y. 
Right now I have them set to 1-1, one, one, which is my first set of squares. Actually, the first set of squares would be, uh, yeah, it would be 1-1. One, one. All right, so the outside squares would be 0, or at least on the left front it would be 0, so it would be 0-0 zero, zero would be the left front corner, which is a place where we're not going to print anyway. Uh, so I'm going to start off with 1-1. One, one. And my current Z offset is negative 0.17. Well, now, what you can do here is you can go down to where it says go to mesh Z value. And then once you select it, the print head is going to come down to the current Z offset. And this will help you uh, fine tune it. So let me set you guys up over here so you can see. What I'm going to use to set the Z offset is going to be this 0.15 feeler gauge. All right, so now on the machine, I'm going to go ahead and press the go to mesh Z value so that it lowers the print head down to the current Z offset. And you can see that we're almost, almost touching the build plate. So if I take my little feeler gauge, I can just, just barely slide it up under there. So that's, that's perfect right now. I have that set exactly the way it needs to be. But if it was off, what you can do is you can change it using the uh, micro step up and down. Let me show you here on the, on the menu. So here on the menu, you got micro step up and down. And what it'll do is it'll change this value up here by uh, 0.01, either up or down. So if we're going to micro step up, this number is going to, since it's already negative, it's going to, it's, the next number is going to be 0.16. So let's go ahead and micro step it up. See how it changed to 0.16. Then micro step it up again, negative 0.15, and so on. If you need to go down, you do the same thing in the other direction. So micro step down is going to increase the negative Z offset. So the next one is going to be negative 0.16 and then back to negative 0.17. All right. All right. So now what you're going to do is you're going to do these for all the points that have problems. So this, this one is okay. So I'm not going to mess with this one. And uh, the next point would be uh, if we're at mesh point Y1 and mesh point X1, if you wanted to go across to the right to the next mesh uh, coordinate, you would just change this mesh point X to the next number, which would be the number 2. And then what's going to happen, as soon as I press this, you're going to see the print head is going to move to the right. So I'm going to go ahead and press it. Print head is going to go to the next probe point, and it's going to go back down to the current Z offset. And again, you're going to get your, your uh, feeler gauge. And you're going to place it under the nozzle. So it fits under the nozzle perfect. And you're going to do that for each probe point that has issues. Ultimately, you can check every probe point if that's what you want to do. But what I found works the best is to use this feeler gauge to get up under the print nozzle. So I'm going to go ahead and raise micro step up the Z offset until the uh, the feeler gauge slides up under it but that I can just barely feel the print nozzle now once I barely feel the print nozzle what I like to do is I like to go up so I'm gonna micro step it up two times and that's going to re reduce the drag on this feeler gauge. Right now it has very little drag, but I'm going to micro step it up two times. And then it's going to go under with, with almost no drag at all. You, you don't even feel it really. So that, that right there is, 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 is perfect. So I'm going to do that for each one of the points. If I wanted to go back and redo a point, I can uh, click on the mesh point and just change it. So I'm going to go back to the first one. Go back down, same thing. I'm going to take the feeler gauge. I'm going to try to get it under the nozzle. 
If it doesn't fit under the nozzle, then I'm going to micro step it up. Till it, till it just gets under the nozzle with uh, very little drag. And then I'm going to micro step up two times. And that should put me right where I need to be. Now, one thing that's very important is that once you go ahead and you set up all of these different probe points, that you go back and you, you look at your mesh. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back again. And then I'm going to click on the menu where it says View Mesh. Make sure you got the uh, Viewer Show Values and Viewer Asymmetric checked. And then click on View Mesh. And this is, is this is going to give you the current mesh the way it looks. And what I would recommend is for you to take a picture of this mesh once you have it all figured out, just in case you make a mistake or you don't save it. That way you can just go back and reset it without having to use the feeler gauge at every different probe point. But once you're happy with your mesh, you want to go back and you want to go down to uh, Save Mesh. Now, the cool thing about this gyres firmware is that it gives you two slots to have two different mesh settings. So right now I have it uh, saved in mesh slot one, but you can also change this to mesh slot two. And or uh, I'm sorry, I got it uh, saved to mesh slot zero, but you can change it to mesh slot one. So it's up to you. If you have more than one mesh, let's say you got two different build services, you like printing on glass. You can have one set up for glass, one set up for your Garolite. So I'm going to go ahead and change this one back to zero. And then you want to save your mesh. So I already got a uh, this mesh saved on mesh slot one. I'm going to show you what that one looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and save this mesh. I'm going to go back to view mesh. So this is the current mesh that we have that we just finished making some changes to. And then I'm going to show you the, the previous version of this mesh. So before I made any changes to this, uh, the mesh here and here was, I believe it was uh, negative Z offset of 0.11 or 0.17, I'm sorry. And then this one was uh, something close to that negative 0.17. So let's go ahead and load the other mesh so you guys can see that one. And how you do that is you go down here to mesh slot zero and then you're going to change this you're going to select it and you're going to change it to your next mesh slot which is one select it and then scroll down to where it says load mesh and then it's going to load the mesh so now if we go back to view mesh view mesh again you can see that our original values are back so negative 0.16 and negative 0.17 so these are the ones that we just changed a couple minutes ago All right, so now let's let's look at the, the the different results. So this was our original our original mesh that we printed. So this is after we created the first mesh. You can see it had a lot of problems. And let me show you the one that we printed successfully. This is after we tweaked it manually. So here is that mesh. So it was like this on the build service. I print I have an arrow here set up in the model so that you know which is the front. And as you can see, all these different probe points uh, look very similar. And this is what you want. This is the only way that you're going to get away with printing uh, on a warped bed. If you're going to be printing large models, this would be the uh, one of the ways that you can do it. It is a little time consuming to go over each probe point and make sure the Z offsets are all correct. Uh, but once you, you have it set, it works really well. So let me show you in the beginning of the video, I showed you that part that we tried to print that failed. So this is the, uh, so this is 
So here's that here's that same that same piece. So as you can see, it printed the first layer, no problem. And everything on the bottom looks nice and even. So guys, so this for me is very exciting. I think this is an awesome, awesome addition to the uh, Marlin firmware. My, my hat's off to the guys that created this unified bed leveling. This this works great. Yeah, I'm really amazed. I just wanted to mention this one thing. So if you go back uh, from the uh, mesh view screen, if you go back, back again to the leveling um, set of options, you'll see that there's one here that's called auto tilt current mesh. And what this thing does is it'll, it'll probe a few points on the bed and then it will adjust the current mesh to those uh, probe values but uh, what, I, what I found at least in, with my particular bed with the way that it's bent is that when I enable this it screws up my mesh so I spent a lot of time fine-tuning the Z offsets using the feeler gauge to make sure that the mesh is correct I've done test prints and then what happens is that if I run this auto tilt current bed mesh it, it messes up the values so I'm gonna not use this feature but again, it just depends on how badly bent your bed is. In my case, it throws my measurements off pretty badly. But I'll show you what it does. So if I look at the current mesh, you can see the values here. And this is the uh, the mesh that I use to, to create these, these prints here. So that's, those are the ones that work best for my machine. But I'm going to go ahead and run a uh, run that auto tilt current mesh so you can see what it does. So it's going to act just like a just like a standard BL touch auto probe. So it's just going to probe a few points on the bed. And that's it. So let me show you what I did to my mesh. So if I go down here to view mesh, Uh, it changed a bunch of these values. So before, these areas over here uh, was uh, 0.16 and 0.17 uh, negative Z offset. And uh, dropped it down to by 0.08 and this by 0 0.07. Uh, so that, that, that throws this, that's going to throw this off pretty badly, at least in this area here. Uh, so that, that's, what I, that's what I don't like about this particular uh, auto bed tilt. Uh, it also changed some values over here it looks like. So I, I don't particularly care for that. So I'm going to go ahead and load the, the previous mesh back in. Now the nice thing about when it when it does it is it doesn't save those values to the EEPROM so you can easily load the previous mesh back in. So what I'm going to do is go back go back down to load mesh and then scroll up to view mesh and then now my original mesh values are back. So you can see my 0.16, negative uh, 0.16 and negative 0.17. And then these values are back to what they used to be. I don't have any anything bright green in the middle. Uh, so anyway, these are things that you can add to your start G code. You can either enable this auto tilt bed like before every print, but that all depends on how your test print comes out if your test print gets messed up after the auto bed tilt then I would recommend leaving it off and just loading the mesh in I don't remove my my uh, Garolite sheet from the build plate anyway because I don't need two parts just pop right off but if you have a magnetic bed plate that you're constantly having to take on and off to remove your parts then you may need to enable that auto bed tilt it just depends on whether or not shifting around that magnetic sheet throws off your prints. Anyhow, guys, thanks for watching. That wraps up this video. Uh, leave me some comments. If you found this video informative, give it a thumbs up. And uh, leave me some comments. I love the comments. And look forward to answering your questions. Take care.